Hiya. Now, welcome to another Irish Whiskey Review with me, Morty McCauley. I've actually remembered to say it this time. I, most of the time I forget to even plug all this stuff. Come and watch me and Justin on a Saturday night. Irish Whiskey Review, hit the subscribe button. I, I always forget to do this. Because I, I think it's cause, I think it's because I'm stupid. Uh, or lazy. Or forgetful. Or something like that. Anyway, whatever it is, I keep forgetting. But anyway, neither here nor there. Um, you find me still in my hotel room, uh, in my hotel room in Washington D.C. Um, here for a couple of days, doing a bit of sightseeing. Um, yeah, um, nice place. I did a lot of walking today. A lot of walking. Um, went to Arlington. My my great uncle is buried there. So I went and saw his grave. Um, very poignant, very moving, and wildly interesting. Wildly interesting. I I saw a grave of a couple of people that have, I, I have to say he, sort of heroes of mine. Um, number one, uh, Kennedy, JFK's grave, uh, and the, then oh, also Audie Murphy. If you don't know who Audie Murphy is. <laughs> yeah, you want to find out. Pfft, what a guy. What a guy. You know, like, like super soldier. Um, World War Two, America's most decorated World War Two uh, veteran soldier, whatever, whatever the term would be. Uh, just an amazing, amazing guy. Tiny little guy. Hard as nails. Hard as nails. Became a singer, songwriter, film actor and all after the war. At one point... Addicted to prescription drugs, um, painkillers, so just locked himself in a hotel room for a week. Went cold turkey, train spot on this, came out right as rain. That was I'm cured. That kind of guy, you know. Um, old, but, but he was there. I haven't seen his grave. It was quite an unassuming grave. It's just a, a grave. There's flowers and stuff. People have come to pay their respects, um, but pretty much the same as everybody else's. Amazing. I've had a, an amazing week here so far. Um, meeting some wonderful people. Uh, uh, yeah, some, some family, some friends, new friends, people people that I know I'll stay in touch with for the rest of my life. Um, just incredible, incredible. But uh, if you watch the if you watch the Irish Whiskey Review, you'll find out more about that because that's more the place to talk to. I'll talk about that, I should say. This, <clears throat> this. It's quite interesting. Now, this is the Derry Distillery, or the Deerwar Distillery, or the the the, the Dar Distillery, or whatever. There's loads. Of people, I I don't speak Gaelic, but I keep hearing people pronouncing this differently. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, okay, back home in in Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh, <laughs> there's a city whose official name is London Derry, okay? That's the official name of it. Everybody calls it Derry. Unless people get offended. It's the most boring thing in the world. It's the, the place started off, its name was Derry, okay? Then it was sold to the London guilds who didn't actually want it by King James the First. Um and they they didn't want it. There was pretty much nothing there. So they started to build a, a town there, and they decided to call it London Derry because everybody knew London, and London had the guilds and so on, and it was a sign of quality. And they built it up as a thing, and then the siege of Derry was there, and so on. And the name of it was never really a contention. They changed the name by charter to London Derry, and that's what it's officially called. Everybody calls it Derry, pretty much. Um, but some people take offence if you call it Londonderry. Some people take offence if you just call it Derry. It's just, uh, honestly, it's just boring. But I came to this place. And in New Hampshire, I went up. And I was speaking to Andy, the guy, the, the guy behind this brand. And he lives in Derry, New Hampshire. But let, I swear this is true. Right next door, not even two miles down the road. Because the two places just sort of blend in. There's a place called Londonderry. So you, you can go, you can go to both of them, uh, 
So if you're if you say that, oh no, it's called Derry, you have to go with this one. And if you want to call it London Derry, there's one up there for you too. What's not I like? And the distillery, and there isn't one in London Derry. Otherwise, they'd be fighting with each other. <laughs> it was dead funny. People over there don't don't really see the humour in it. Back home, people do. I, I, it's just ah, it's it's very funny. Now I'm putting on the the old Gatos. So this is Sanders Malt Whiskey. Uh, now it's bottled at forty three percent, and it is aged for six months in New American oak. Now. <sighs> Loads of people get very up at it. This, oh, it's only aged for six months. What does that mean? Well, it means that's all the guy thought it needed. And I'd be honest, a lot of the time, these guys, these guys produce nice, nice whiskies. Now, there's a little, a little bit of that char in there. This, this reminds me of a certain guy back home, um, in County Down, leaving stuff in it. So it's just like a, a little piece of it that you carry with you. Bit of a novelty, but um, Andy said that the reason they put that in is because it actually does a little bit of carries it on, carries on a little bit of the aging process. Um, the still he has interesting. A lot of the stills over here are made with stainless steel with copper inserts. It keeps surprising me just how little copper's actually needed. To do what it needs to do. Now you'll hear people talking about lots and lots of copper contact, and there's no two ways about it. It does make a difference, but in order to just take the sulfur uh, compounds out, you don't need a huge amount, and it's it's really quite interesting. It gives the the whiskey different elements. Um, it strips out the the sulfur, but it's not. I'm not sure what other chemicals aren't being stripped out or paired back maybe it's maybe a better way of putting it um no i don't we don't understand that process but it's doing something but copper has to go in but lots of these guys are have have stainless steel stills with copper inserts and the, a lot of them are hybrid stills you'll have a a, a, a mix of a mash ton slash um stripping still and then a, a, a spirit still which will have plates on it and stuff, and they're all. I've I've seen a few of these now, and they and they, they they're different designs, different setups, and it's really it's really interesting to see what a lot of these American guys are doing. Um, yeah, really interesting. Now, this has a very very strong nose. If from here, you're picking up. It's kind of like um, toffee covered or or or, or caramelized pecan nuts. That's coming through, and there's there's a little. There's, this is a thing that I seem to get quite a lot with those stainless steel stills. You get a a, a slightly tarry note that comes through, which I quite like, if I'm honest. Um. It, it, it's, it gives it a sort of base note, if you like, where the sweetness comes in. We'll say the sweetness comes in here, and you know, your esters are up here, but your, your sweetness is in about here. This tarry note's here, and it's given this, it kind of pulls this up a bit and this down a bit, but it's maybe not the most balanced thing in the world. But it's, it's not bad, that's not the worst thing in the world, to be honest. Now, there's a. There's a note in this that's slightly off, just a little bit off. That, um, that's not particularly pleasant. I don't mean I don't mean to be disparate. I'm not putting this down, because some people will really like this. Just not for me. It's just it, it, it the tariness is a tariness is nice. It's, it, it's there, but there's just a little drop off. But it sweetens up as well, so yeah, it's it's the tariness sort of becomes a little bit rubbery, um, and you you'll know that you'll know that note that I mean, and I'm not saying it's this it, it that it's not pleasant, it just not 
doesn't necessarily work with me just on the nose. Mm. But mouthfeel comes in. It's got a lovely mouthfeel. I mean, it's lovely. It's luxurious. Honey. Again, that little bit of tar. <laughs> a little bit of rubber. But you also have some uh, sort of sharp citrus notes that go in and out straight away and then soften to to like uh, candy jellies but without too much sugar so sort of um, boiled orange sweet that kind of note so it, it's the finish isn't too long <coughs> the finish isn't very long but what is there is quite pleasant and it does develop a little bit it, it, it sort of lightens on, on that orange note, that sort of citrus note. And it's really nice, sort of sweet. Little bit. And it leaves the tar behind. And it works, <coughs> excuse me, it works on a couple of different levels, this. And, and I, I actually quite like this because it sets itself out as different. I've not really tasted a whiskey like this. And, <coughs> and that's a good thing. Because there's lots of whiskies that are not that dissimilar. You know, they're aged fairly similar. They're, they're, I mean, single malts. You have all that range of wonderful single malts. But a lot of the time, the base product's not that dissimilar. You end up with, you know, aid, if it's aged in bourbon, you have your, your vanilla notes and so on and so forth. This, this kind of tastes a little bit idiosyncratic, a little bit of its own thing. Now, whether how much designment into this because it's a fairly new thing pretty much all i mean all of the american whiskey industry barring the massive guys barring all the big guys it's pretty pretty much new and it's not that dissimilar from ireland you know you have the the sort of big guys who've been doing it for a long time um who have established themselves and are pumping out quite a lot of stuff and then lots of little guys who've just popped up some of them are not that big and in the states it's kind of like most things in the states it's kind of exacerbated <laughs> beyond all recognition that we would know so you have thousands of these little tiny distilleries and lots of them are doing really good stuff um yeah uh I, I, good on you guys good on you you know you're you're, you're doing stuff that you love you like you're putting it forward you're putting it out and the nose is a it's just a little bit different you know as i say there's that tariness but the, the sort of sweetened pecans now that it's out a little bit it's still that pecan um maybe pecan pie a little bit uh, and that tarry note where it's sort of rubbery it's, uh, yeah, it's still there, and I'm, I'm I'm actually growing to like it a bit more. I went down this. I mean, you've seen I've been drinking away at this, and really rather enjoying it. Uh, yeah. Um. Don't know what. If you were going to do this on a cocktail, I wouldn't do very much with it. Maybe a drop of um, Seven Up or something, you know, which would uh, sort of lift it a bit, but still keep that tariness on it. It would probably lift it. <laughs> you could drink this. This is easy to drink. I mean, easy to drink, even though people will go, oh, wow, that's a bit different. Ain't nothing wrong with different. On the finish, Dark sugar comes in again. That citrusy thing that lifts up uh, orange flesh. No pith or peel. You know it's it's like peeled oranges, um, even tinned oranges. The, the, the flesh. Once you've drained off the syrupy stuff, there's that flesh, uh, quite juicy, and it, that's that's really quite pleasant. Like what the guys are doing. 
I quite like the presentation. I like I like these square bottles for some reason. I don't know why, but I, I, I do. Um, I like the little bit of char in it. He named it after a guy that he worked with, and so on and so forth. Hard to get because it's not much of it, and I'm reviewing it because simply because I was there. I interviewed the guy, <coughs> um, and I really liked what they're doing, and I had to go just up because I got a picture of the sign that says Derry and London Derry. And they're about that far apart. Um, it just uh, appealed to me. I got there. I got to meet a nice guy, uh, and I'm going to give it a good review because I was there. But I will just say, as I was kind of thinking about this, have you ever you know those cough medicines that you get with uh, the, the kind of menthol with honey inside them? Um, for, if you've if you've a bit of a cold, that you, you you know you suck on and the honey goes. Out. There's elements of that in this as well. Kind of tastes a little bit medicinal. And in that regard, it kind of tastes a little bit scotchy without being scotchy, if you know what I mean. It's kind of got that. There's a lot going on in this little bottle. Um, yeah, well done. And I will quite happy, because this, this is hard to get. I'll give, I'm going to give this... It's hard to get. It wasn't very expensive. I think it was $45, I think it was. Uh, there or thereabouts. Um, I'll give this a, re a, a very respectable, a very respectable 7 out of 10. You know I don't like giving numbers, but I kind of have to. 7 out of 10 will, will, will be a, a good score for this. Um, yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those that pe I think people probably like and dislike it. And you could... The thing about this is you probably could like and dislike it at the same time and be and still be right with yourself because it's it's kind of a little bit a little bit different and you probably need to sit and work with it for a few days a bit longer a couple of bottles and then go you know something I actually really like that I mean you can't please everybody all the time so no point in trying you set yourself up something that you think is good something you like something you'll stand behind and push it forward and these guys are doing it, and yeah, more power to them. As I say, if you really want to try this, um, get online, go to the Derry Distillery, message them, who knows, might send you a bottle out if, if you ask them very nice. As I say, check it out. If you live in New Hampshire, go and get the local guys. You know, shop local guys, because you know, it does make a huge difference. So, yeah, <laughs> if you can, pick yourself up a bottle of this. You won't be disappointed. It's interesting, and that's better than most things are. So, without further ado, subscribe. To, hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost a penny. Just hit subscribe. Share the the uh, review if you like it. Tell your friends. Tune into the Irish Whiskey Review with me and my mate Justin on Saturday nights. Take care, guys. See you soon.